Skyreel has another update, version 2 of their AI models. Now, one of the very interesting things about Skyreel version 2 is that it has unique features from their AI models, which use infinite length for video generation. We can make videos even longer. This isn't just for image to video with long lengths. Rather, we can use existing videos and make the ending look wilder, allowing us to get more creative with existing footage as well. Now, they're showcasing all this by using very long video lengths like this one, which is 28 seconds, and another one I'm seeing that's 30 seconds of an undersea view kind of footage. And it's actually doing pretty well, as you can see in different durations. In these videos, there aren't those warping or stone-like freezing frames. You see all the movement on any elements here. They're moving uniquely every second. And it's not like, you know, oversaturated image frames. They call this the DF version. The model weights are specifically designed for running longer video lengths. Now, this model uses what they call diffusion forcing models. It's able to generate very long video lengths, and it also supports image to video and text to video. Now, they have a list of the new updates in version 2, and some of them are already published on Hugging Face and Model Scope. Others are still coming soon. The text to video and image to video from version 2 model weights are typical for text to video and image to video. But for diffusion forcing, this is the one we want to try out today. It's able to generate long video lengths. Just like last time, we talked about the frame pack. And you guys should realize that, in some ways, when technologies are released, especially recently in AI, you'll notice that if Project A is doing something, other companies and open source communities often follow up with similar features or updates in their next releases. They might be using other open source technologies for their updates, or they might have something they've developed themselves. Who knows? So therefore, we're trying out the diffusion forcing model weights. Again, this is able to support text to video and image to video. One thing I want to mention is that this isn't only for image to video. It's actually able to do video to video extension because we're not limited to only one image to run with this model weight. So we're going to check out how to run this in Comfy UI. First, we need to update our one video wrapper. As you can see right here, let's zoomed in. I know a lot of people have asked and then missed out on parts of the videos and later come back and comment, why can't I find these custom nodes? Well, the WAN video wrapper is custom nodes on GitHub. You have to install that manually using the command prompt window. As you can see, this description already mentions that. You can check out previous video how to install it. So without wasting time, let's check out the new model for Skyrim version two. It's in the when videos comfy UI repositories from KJ. Through these files, you can go to the Skyreel folder, click into the folder sections, and you'll see all the lists of compiled FP8, FP16, and FP32 models. Even though we have this for Skyreel version 2, and also the previous release of Skyreel A2, this is for the reference to image model. But today, we're going to use and check out WAN 2.1. Skyreel version 2, DF, 1.3 billion parameters, and this is in FP32. Now, because this is a very low and small parameter model, 1.3 billion parameters, it should be able to run on a lot of computer GPU models. And this is the lowest and easiest requirement to use Skyreel version 2. So once you download this, store it in the typical way in the models folder under the diffusion models subfolder. Once you put that in there, you can come here. There's a workflow in this guy, in the one video wrapper. And in the one video wrapper, there are some example workflows where you can try it out. One of the new ones is the Skyrim Diffusion Forcing Extension. This is for generating long length videos from images and also for video generation extensions. Therefore, we're going to try out something else because, well, you already have this. You can drag and drop and play around by yourself and everyone's happy. But here, as I want to show you first, the diffusion forcing, what's called the DF 1.3 billion parameter size model, is able to be used for just text to image. And also, because this is a WAN 2.1 base model, you can try out some LoRa if you want to experiment with WAN 2.1 LoRa. 
Some of it might work, some of it might not. It depends on how the Laura was trained. Then, come here to the sampling, it's very easy. Just go through the WAN videos text encoder, positive and negative prompts. We have the WAN videos empty latent embedding size, and then the number of frames. That means how long your video is going to be. And then here, we've got the T cache, the CFG start features, and also the SLG for layer guidance. Then, we come to here, we see the sampler. This isn't using the previous WAN video sampler from the WAN videos wrapper. It's using the new one called the diffusion forcing sampler. This is something different we have to notice because there's something here when you're using preflex samples. This is where you can extend your videos to make them very long. And other than that, this sampler is going to identify the DF types of models. So when we're using DF 1.3b, or you can try to use DF14B, but this one is a much larger model. You'll need a very decent GPU to run this. Otherwise, just go back to the basics and try. What we're doing right now is the DF1.3 billion parameter size model. This is convenient for most GPUs to run. So here, we've tested text to video, just like these examples I showed. Very easy, simple. One good thing is that this model runs using 1.3 billion parameters. It's about the same memory consumption as SDXL, so about 5 to 6 gigabytes of VRAM, you'll need to run the 1.3 billion parameter size WAN 2.1 Skyreal version 2. And then, in the workflow examples in these custom nodes, you have this diffusion forcing example workflow, where you can play around with the same things for image to video and also video to video. Because this one is kind of like a draft, you can enhance it based on this example workflow and customize it to whichever method or style you like. I've tried modifying this workflow to my own style of use and something that works well for image to video. Also, I've tried this one with videos as an extension for video. So like this example, I have a very short video clip. The total length of this video is actually very short, only 107 frames. And then I tried to extend this to an even longer one, like this. It also has sound because I use these AI sound effect models to add background sound effects here. And the total length of this is 15 seconds, generated in one shot. So this is just like the frame pack we saw last time, a long video length. And then, each of the motion actions here, as you can see, is very unique. You won't have the same image frames hanging over the entire duration of the video. It keeps moving the character, keeps moving the camera at this angle, and then starts moving along with the character. Also, the character has emotions on their face as well, and those can be done in this workflow. Again, my workflow here is based on the example workflow I tried, and then I modified it a little bit to try out whatever things I needed, uh, put that in as well. And also, you know, make it work for my habits, using videos for loading and also some images for what I want to work on. And then we're going to test it out with a few examples here. Another example is video extension using the newest Skyreel version 2 DF. Custom notes that include files in the workflow examples, and then, I just did a little modification to the workflow adding different parameters here. So we're going to use the 1.3 billion parameter size as well as Sage Attention. One more time, if you don't install Sage Attention, you can use the SDPA Attention method. Either one works on Windows. And then we're able to run this. The next thing we have to see is the text prompts. Well, I put that in here. Just a very simple text prompt. A woman gets up and walks toward the camera side which we have the initial image for, and then it will go through with these motions like that. So a lot of times, when we see the motions for 46 or 97 image frames, you won't get enough time frames for the actor or character's motions to complete. So therefore, this diffusion forcing enables us to do another round of 97 image frames here for the extension. And as you can see, this sampler too right here, we have the second sampling for another 97 image frames rendering here. Throughout this, we've captured the first 17 frames as this workflow sets by default for frame count overlapping. So it will stitch each image generated throughout the last previous sampler one. We have the videos and then 
we'll reuse those 17 frames from the last length of the first sampling video, bring those 17 frames to another batch of sampling, so it will make the extended video smooth going through. Instead of just taking the last frames and doing the last frame as another round of sampling and stitching it together as a video extender, that way, you'll sometimes see that there's a little pause or different motions, not coherent movement in the video. If you're using one image frame from the last frame and generating another image to video in the old way of doing it, and this one, as you can see, we've started from the middle of the first video and then we bring that timeline here. Then, once we have the second sampling, this will be the last sampler 3, where we have another last 17 frames from sampler 2. And then we bring these numbers of frames to the VAE. Through the encoding, we have the prefix sampling, which gives us a list of 17 image frames. And then we bring that to another sampler for processing a little further here. As you can see, another half of the character's motions moving, and we've got the whole video here. Now, in the workflow examples of the one video wrapper, it's using the final video combined using the image batch multi. So, image batch multi. So, rather than using that, I just use the join videos from another node because there's an FPS setting as well, allowing you to set the frame rate. It's basically the same features and functions to work with. And I like to have the background sound effect added using the mm audio so then we've got the whole video generated with audio we can check it out here so as you can see we've got the audio as well as the visuals of this video yeah basically this is able to do video extensions smoothly and then throughout the whole process you're able to generate something like a 30 second video as well. Another dancer example, which I show in the beginning of this video using Skyreel V2 as video extension for this example. So the total length is 15 seconds. As you can see, we're able to generate a long video right now using this method. With the recent update of AI video models, as we've seen frame packs, and now Skyreel has modified and fine tuned WAN 2.1 as Skyreel version 2, a lot of long length uh, video generation is happening right now. So I think this is a good sign for AI videos showing continuous improvement in performance and meeting market demands for video creation. So far, I see that Skyreel isn't top-notch quality yet, but then so far you see that the motion still needs more data sets to train and enhance those motions. Especially when you go to the second and third samplers in this example, you see those motions aren't quite natural or rich, so I think it needs more data to improve. Or what they're using is WAN 2.1 to fine tune. That will make it better for AI video fine tuning model. This is Skyreel version 2, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.